I grew up in, over in Waterford, and then we moved out here um, to North Stonington when I was like 15 years old. But I spent, uh, I spent, you know, when I was real young, I was out fishing with my grandfather a lot, and uh, he introduced me to, to fishing. And we used to go down to a uh, little cove and catch snapper blues and small schoolies. And then, uh, you know, as time grew on, I just, I got more and more into fishing. And I actually got away from fishing for quite a while when I went to college and was, you know, working on uh, uh, my career. And then uh, in 2000, uh, 2001, I ran into a guy that I had met earlier and uh, he introduced me to surf casting again and, and that was it. I just, I fell in love with it and I just been doing it ever since. I got into plug, making plug bags um, just because of some problems I had with some other bags that were on the market. Uh, I had purchased a bag on a Wednesday, went to Cuddy on a Thursday, and by Friday night I had the seams were blown out of my bag and I was having issues with it. Um, so uh, after swimming out to a rock and feeling some stuff in my leg and some pricks, I kind of thought, oh, I must be wrapped up in some line. And uh, when I slid up on the rock, I got pricked pretty good and uh, I looked down and it was all my plugs. They had come out of the bag and stuck in my wetsuit and uh, the seams were all ripped on my, on my, on my bag. And um, right then I decided that was it. I was, uh, I was buying a machine and uh, I started making bags. Uh, after that night of fishing, I had told uh, Mike Ludlow up on the steps at Cuddy Hunk at the fishing club. And uh, I told him, I said, I'm buying a machine. And he laughed at me, thought I was kidding. Uh, by the following Friday, I had my first machine. I started making bags for myself and uh, basically started with a small little bucktail pouch just to get used to drawing templates and, uh, and making something that I wanted. Uh, it took me a long time to find the right materials and uh, all the things that it took to make a quality bag. And in my, in my mind, if I was going to take the time to make a bag for myself, I wanted the best bag I could get. So I started you know, looking for the best components and uh, it was difficult. I got samples and samples and uh, made a lot of phone calls, got a lot of dead ends. Um, people that said that, oh yeah, you got to talk to this guy, and you know, you call that guy, and oh, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Um, so basically, I, after a, a trial and error of months, I finally found the right materials uh, that I wanted, and uh, I made my first real surf bag for myself. And one of my friends saw it, and they said, I want one. I got to have it, and that was it. Uh, that's how I got started. They pushed me because they wanted them. <laughs> the first bag that I made, I gave away. I gave to a, a college kid uh, about a year ago. Well, no, yeah, about a year ago. Um, I gave him the bag uh, because he didn't have a bag. He was looking for a used bag, and uh, there was nothing wrong with it. Um, the stainless grommets didn't rust. They didn't. Uh, they didn't wear. They didn't corrode. Um, the bag still looked pretty much like new, except for it was dirty. And uh, I put new tubes in it and new strap, and gave it to him just before Thanksgiving, and he was pretty happy. When I started making the bags for my friends, um, I, I I really didn't have any intentions on going commercially. I really was just going to make a couple of bags and it was going to be a winter thing, kind of like making plugs that I had started like six years earlier. Um, and I thought, well, it'll be fun. You know, I'll have my friends over, we'll make a couple of bags and, and uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll test them out and see how they do. Well, after the first few bags, my friends really thought that I should, you know, sell a couple because I had bought a machine and it was pretty expensive. And uh, it was a pretty big investment, in, you know, initially. And they said, well, why don't you sell a couple? And I said, well, I really don't want to do that. And they said, well, we want to buy a couple. So I had uh, one friend buy two bags. And then I had another friend buy uh, another bag. And then it went from there. My friends were, you know, giving me a decent amount of money for the bag. And I started to realize, well, I could recoup my machine and basically, uh, you know, just have, have bags and not uh, a big expense. Well, <laughs> as we know, that's not where it went. And uh, four machines later and a big expense in machines, um, I'm making bags commercially. I make all the components myself and then I assemble the bags myself. Um, everything is done here and I have another place where I lay out material at a big big table um, and uh, I lay it all out and cut it out there. Um, it takes quite a bit 
a time to make a bag uh, from start to finish uh, for a bag that I have templates for it could take anywhere from 12 to 15 hours um, depending on how complex the bag is uh, if I have to draw templates since I do do some custom bags um, the templates sometimes can take between six and eight hours to draw because I have to draw templates for the pocket the top the internal pouches components the side pockets uh, and then the main bag and the most difficult part about drawing components is um, the uh, the lines the stitching lines they all have to line up and when you look around one of my bags uh, all the stitching lines all the way around on the tops the fronts the backs the sides everything just lines up and it's, it just makes an, a much neater and nicer finished product. I've had a lot of people ask me about why they should have a custom bag. Um, a lot of it is choice, but a lot of it is uh, because of the quality of the bag. Uh, there'll be no more hooks to dig out of the bag in the middle of the night. Um, the bag can be made to fit them uh, depending on their fishing style. You can get pockets where you want, pouches where you want. Um, it's a little extra money, but uh, uh, if you're a guy that's out fishing a lot, um, it's definitely worth it. If you're a guy that only gets an occasional weekend or two, there's a you don't you don't need to get a high end uh, custom bag, but you can get a mid range bag where I'm actually make a bag which has one layer of Dacron on the inside, and it's a little less money, but it's still a really good quality bag, and it'll definitely suit your need. But the advantages to a high end custom bag is you can get whatever you want to fit what you want. You can get extra wrapping on the pockets. You can get extra drainage if you're a wetsuiter. You can get a camera case. You can get a shoulder strap. You can get front pouches. You can get bags with no accessories on the outside. You can get small two tube bags. Anything that you want is that's gonna fit your fishing style is something that you can get with a custom bag. I've been asked a lot about what makes my bag different from everybody else's. One of the things I did was look for the best components available to make my bags. I use a high quality stainless, not a not a just a cheap inexpensive stainless, but a very good stainless for the grommets. Um, I, uh, I make sure all my stitching is is in line. I don't double stitch because of the amount of stitching inside the bag. The more stitching you have inside the bag, the more of a chance that you'll have for a hook to catch in your stitching. I also have a very durable bottom. I looked for, I looked and tested a lot of materials to find out what would make the toughest bottom. I found a very durable, durable, tight weave material uh, to make the bottom rigid so it doesn't have any flex and also it reinforces the whole bottom of the bag. I wrap the back of the bag so when your belt runs through the bag it's all reinforced belt loops and the whole back of the bag has that same material. I reinforce and box stitch the top flap. I also have a side pouch that holds a 20 ounce Gatorade bottle. Even if this bottle is empty, it's tight enough where it'll never float out if you're wetsuiting. I use a webbing pork rind holder on the side of the bag. It's something that I had wanted. I use a military grade Velcro uh, on all the two inch Velcro on this, the pork rind holder, the front pouch. I also sew the front pouch into the seams, which is something new. Uh, it took a lot of design uh, effort and a lot of trial and error. It took me quite a while to, to perfect the, the pocket so there's no gaps in the corners and so everything lines up. And the pocket is sewn together and sewn into the bag and designed to be full. So if the pocket is empty, your top flap, which will never come open, will just fold down a little more. But it'll still have that same strength in the closure. On the larger Velcro, I use a really, really tough industrial grade Velcro. 
it's something that is a necessity for any bag, any high-end bag, to keep it closed in the surf. Uh, in the beginning, when I started making bags, there was a huge learning curve. I would go weeks with basically running into dead ends, sewing bags together, making prototypes, and it took me quite a while to, uh, to overcome some of the challenges of making a bag. Um, I think the toughest thing to making a bag was having the lines line up, having the bag close right. Right now, I'm making a variation of bags. I make the three tube, which is designed for the wet suitor. I make the four tube, which is also designed for a wet suitor. But it's also a great bag for walking the beach if you don't want a real big bag. Uh, it has lots of drainage. Every bag I have, have and make has lots of drainage. I make a cube which is a great bag to stay compact behind your back when you're wet suiting if you're going to carry extra plugs. I also make a six tube and an eight tube which I don't currently have in stock. The satisfaction that I get out of making bags is it doesn't come from making a bag and getting a couple dollars for it. It really comes from making a bag that somebody wants and getting an email how they're ecstatic or how they got the exact bag they wanted or how I got it to them in time, which is pretty difficult. I really try and stick to a two to three week time frame when I make a custom bag. If it's a bag I gotta make templates for, uh, it takes a little longer. But it's really, it, it's really fulfilling to have somebody be really excited and really happy because they know they just got a great bag.